I am not here to tickle your ears, to entertain you. I will talk to you frankly and honestly. The message I bring is not a happy one, but it is the truth. And time is always on the side of truth. As the German philosopher Goethe said, truth must be repeated again and again because error is constantly being preached round about. I realize that the bearer of bad news is always unpopular. As a people, we love sweetness and light, especially sweetness. Those who will learn nothing from history are condemned to repeat it. This we are doing in the Americas today. George Washington stated, truth will ultimately prevail where there are pains taken to bring it to light. To bring the truth to light is our challenge, this day and every day. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. We are fast approaching that moment prophesied by Joseph Smith when he said, even this nation will be on the very verge of crumbling to pieces and tumbling to the ground. And when the Constitution is upon the brink of ruin, this people will be the staff upon which the nation shall lean. And they shall bear the Constitution away from the very verge of destruction. We have moved a long way and are now moving further and more rapidly down the soul-destroying road of socialism. The evidence is clear, shockingly clear, for all to see. As an independent American, for constitutional government, I declare that first, I believe that no people can maintain freedom unless their political institutions are founded upon faith in God and belief in the existence of moral law. Second, I believe that God has endowed men with certain unalienable rights as set forth in the Declaration of Independence, and that no legislature and no majority, however great, may morally limit or destroy these, that the sole function of government is to protect life, liberty, and property, and anything more than this is usurpation and oppression. A critic from Washington, D.C. claimed that a person who serves in a church capacity should not comment on such matters. He charged that the separation of church and state requires that church officials restrict their attention to the affairs of the church. I, of course, also believe that the institutions of church and state should be separated. But I also do not agree that spiritual leaders cannot comment on basic issues which involve the very foundation of American liberty. In fact, if this were true, we would have to throw away a substantial part of the Bible. Speaking out against immoral or unjust actions of political leaders has been the burden of prophets and disciples of God from time immemorial. It was for this very reason that many of them were persecuted. Some of them were stoned, some of them were burned, many were imprisoned. Nevertheless, it was their God-given task as watchmen on the towers to speak up. It is certainly no different today. To Moses, God said, proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. Why? For God knows full well that the gospel, his plan of, for the blessing of his children, can prosper only in an atmosphere of freedom. To modern men, God has said, the Constitution should be maintained for the rights and protection of all flesh. I feel it is always good strategy to stand up for the right, even when it is unpopular. Perhaps I should say especially when it is unpopular. Will we be prepared? Will we be among those 
who will bear the Constitution away from the very verge of destruction. If we desire to be numbered among those who will, here are some of the things we must do. First, we must be righteous and moral. We must live the gospel principles, all of them. We have no right to expect a higher degree of morality from those who represent us than what we ourselves are. To live a higher law means we will not seek to receive what we have not earned by our labor. It means we will remember that government owns us, owes us nothing. It means we will keep the laws of the land. It means we will look to God as our lawgiver and the source of our liberty. Two, we must learn the principles of the Constitution and then abide by its precepts. Have we read the Constitution and pondered it? Are we aware of its principles? Could we defend it? Can we recognize when a law is constitutionally unsound? The Church will not tell us how to do this, but we are admonished to do it. Three, we must become involved in civic affairs. As citizens of this Republic, we cannot do our duty and be idle spectators. It is vital that we follow this counsel from the Lord. Quote, honest man and wise man should be sought for diligently, and good man and wise man ye should observe to uphold. Otherwise, whatsoever is less than these cometh of evil. Unquote. Note the qualities that the Lord demands in those who are to represent us. They must be good, wise, and honest. We must be concerned in our desires and efforts to see men and women represent us who possess all three of these qualities, goodness, wisdom, and honesty. For we must make our influence felt by our vote, our letters, and our advice. We must be wisely informed and let others know how we feel. We must take part in local precinct meetings and select delegates who will represent our feelings. I have faith that the Constitution will be saved as prophesied by Joseph Smith, but it will not be saved in Washington. It will be saved by citizens of this nation who love and cherish freedom. It will be saved by enlightened members of this church, men and women, who will subscribe to it and abide the principles of the Constitution. To the patriots, I say this. Take the long eternal look. Stand up for, for freedom no matter what the cost. It can help to save your soul and maybe your country. This is a choice land. 
choice above all others. Blessed by the Almighty, our forefathers have made and kept it so. It will continue to be a land of freedom and liberty as long as we are able to advance in the light of sound and enduring principles of right. To sacrifice such principles for momentary expediency, often selfishly motivated, is to endanger our noble heritage and is unworthy of this great American people. With all my heart, I love this great nation. I have lived and traveled abroad just enough to make me appreciate rather fully what we have here. To me, this is not just another nation. It is not just one of the family of nations. This is a nation with a great mission to perform for the benefit of liberty-loving people everywhere. It is my firm conviction that the constitution of this land was established by men whom the God of heaven raised up unto that very purpose. This is part of my religious faith. The days ahead are sobering and challenging and will demand the faith, prayers, and loyalty of every American. As the ancient apostle declared, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. May God give us the wisdom to recognize the danger, the dangers of complacency, the threat to our freedom, and the strength to meet this danger courageously. Our challenge is to keep America strong and free, strong socially, strong economically, and above all, strong spiritually if our way of life is to endure. There is no other way. Only in this course is there safety for our nation. In this mighty struggle, each of you has a part. Every person on the earth today chose the right side during the war in heaven. Be on the right side now. Stand up and be counted. If you get discouraged, Remember the words of Edward Everett Hale when he said, I am only one, but I am one. I can't do everything, but I can do something. What I can do, that I ought to do. And what I ought to do, by the grace of God, I shall do. And this is my prayer for you this day. May God bless all of you, each and every one. Thank you very much.